So let's take a look at the following example that deals with the vibrational and rotational energy of a molecule as well as electron transitions. So lithium and chlorine can form a diatomic molecule, an ionic compound, that has a frequency of oscillation or vibration of 1.7 times 10 to the 13 hertz. So basically this is how many vibration oscillations our molecule makes every single second. So in part A, we want to calculate the stiffness constant of our molecule. So we basically want to use this equation. Now if we solve this equation for K, the stiffness constant, we get this equation. And notice, although we do know what the frequency is, we don't know what our mu is. And the mu is the reduced mass, which can be obtained by using this equation. So first we must calculate what our mu is. So if we use our periodic table, we see that the mass of lithium is given by 6.941 unified atomic mass units and the mass of chlorine is 35.453 unified atomic mass units. So we take the product of the masses and divide that by the sum of the masses and that gives us about 5.80 unified atomic mass units. And because we want to convert from unified atomic mass units to kilograms, we multiply this by our conversion factor to so 1.6605 times 10 to negative 27 kilograms per unified atomic mass units. They use cancel and we're left with this quantity. So this is the reduced mass of our lithium chloride molecule. So now we are ready to apply this equation. Now, by the way, this equation comes from simple harmonic motion. So now we are ready to solve for k. If we plug in our values, we plug in this quantity for f and this quantity for mu, we get about 110 newtons per meter. Notice this is a relatively small value. For example, in our lecture when we calculated the stiffness constant for carbon monoxide which has a double bond character for that case we saw the stiffness was about 1850 and in this case it's only 110 and that makes sense because the lith because the bond between lithium and chloride is an ionic bond it's a relatively weak bond now let's move on to part B so now we want to assume there is an electron transition taking place. So if an electron transitions from V equals 0 to V equals 1 and from L equals 1 to L equals 0, where V is the vibrational quantum number and L is our rotational quantum number, calculate the amount of energy as a result of the rotational plus vibrational motion. Assume that the bond length between lithium and chloride is 0 .0, 0 0.202 nanometers. So we basically want to apply this equation. So this equation gives us the total change in energy of our molecule that basically creates the electron transition. And the total energy is a result of the vibrational or the change in vibrational energy plus the change in rotational energy. So because we're going through these transitions, our delta E vibration is given by this quantity and the delta E rotational is given by this quantity. Now what exactly is our I? The I is the moment of inertia as a result of the rotating molecule. Now I is given by taking mu and multiplying by the separation distance squared. So we replace I with mu multiplied by R squared where R is our bond length given in meters and mu is this quantity. 
delta t. So if we plug in our values, so h is Planck's constant, f is the frequency, h bar is the reduced Planck, uh, Planck's constant, l is the higher value of l which is 1, our mu is given to be this quantity and r is this multiplied by 10 to the negative 9, we square that, so we take the sum and we get the following result, so 1.12 times 10 to the negative 20 joules. If we take this and divide that by 1.6, times 10 to negative 19, we get the energy in electron volts. So 0 0.0702 electron volts, uh, this is the energy that basically changes, that causes that electron transition. So the electron absorbs this quantity of energy and basically jumps between these two quantum states.